we could jump in because I have a ton of questions here. We've talked before and we definitely geek out over the same things. But one thing I have to ask you to start this off with because it caught my eye right away. And I, I just need to know this because it's so fascinating that you've made eye contact with both a bear and a shark. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping not at the same time. <laughs> like, <laughs> a shark like paddling up to you. Like, I'm sorry, a bear doing that while sharks, you know, swing around. But Talk about that, because first off, I think yeah, that's totally. a beautiful connection to nature. I know that means so much to you, but I mean, th those are really fascinating thing. Not many people are going to make that icon. Tell me about that story. I need to know. Oh, my goodness. Way to kick things off here, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We just get to hang out and that's share our expertise and what we're seeing with clients and all that cool stuff. But yeah, personally, I have made eye contact with both a bear and a shark. I'm, I have a number of animal encounters here on this beautiful island where I live. I go off grid once a week, bears, cougars, eagles, so many cool animals here. So I was actually in Belize on a scuba diving trip and I was, how deep was I? I think it was about 60 feet below on this beautiful reef with like a SpaceX rocket scientist. Of course, we were geeking out on the whole boat ride there and all that cool stuff. And uh, this is actually my first open water dive. And I, I just had a feeling I was going to see sharks. So I did my due diligence and research, okay, which was you really need to worry about and keep your appendages to yourself. And, you know, which ones are just going to kind of take a look at you. So uh, that's what I call, what, what would you say, calculated risk assessment, if you will. And so we're on this reef and it's just stunning. There's this group of fish, you know, they just come right up to you. They're like dogs in the ocean. They're really cool. And then out from the deep blue, these three things just start coming towards us. Oh, and we're all going like, nervous. shark, shark, right? <laughs> this is a scuba sign for shark. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm going through my air a little bit faster because you have to keep an eye on uh, how much oxygen you have in your tank. And literally I could have reached out and touched it, but I thought, you know, I'm going to keep my hands to myself here. <laughs> Smart. So <laughs> And it's so interesting making eye contact with a shark. It's like looking into a robot's eyes mm. and they're just kind of swimming around, checking you out. But they, it was about the same size as I was. So I wasn't about to engage with it, if you will. But I was just there and just looking at that, like what an experience of a lifetime, not in a cage, mm -hmm. just swimming around. And uh, it was just weird looking into the deep blue and then seeing these three sharks come towards you. And that must have been I, surreal. Yeah, but I wasn't fearful. And I just took in the experience. And uh, in the scuba group, yes, I was the first to surface because I blew <laughs> through my oxygen. But let's just preface that, that that was my first open water dive. <laughs> That's crazy. So I learned how big my kahunas were. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you, you tackle, listen, that's one of my biggest fears. Anyone that knows me see, knows I've seen too many shark weeks and I'm petrified of the, not the ocean. I love the ocean. I'm petrified what's in the ocean sharks, but I've always said, that's one thing I'd love to conquer is jump in, you know, and actually go see sharks and make that eye contact and, and tackle that fear. Cause that's what makes you evolve. And I think that's part of being healthy. It's interesting. You said that because actually growing up, water was my fear deep mm. water i would be that girl at the lake with you know my blow up party island that i'd invite all my friends on little did they know that was actually like my safety raft mm. <laughs> <laughs> my safety flotation device but for some reason that was always my fear and i just got to the point where i'm just gonna you know smash this fear in the face and just do it and so i had some really great scuba training with some ex-military personnel and did it on the west coast of Canada here in a wetsuit. And uh, I have never experienced actually truly walking on frozen feet getting out of the water in the wow. Canada during my training here. I felt like I was walking on pegs. It was really interesting. <laughs> well, that's something you do also is cold water immersion, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. jump into that later because I, I mean, again, too many topics to go through, but I had to hear that one because that not many people could say they made mm -hmm. eye contact with both a bear and a shark and very, very um, uh, admirable of you to, to do both those things. So let's jump into, you know, a different topic here. And when I know you are an expert in, of course, anti-aging and I want to hear your definition of anti-aging. When I was on your show, you asked me that. And now I want to ask you the same question because you're combining 
biohacking, beauty practices. You're doing more virtual meets in clinic. It's very kind of comprehensive. And I'd love to hear your take on what exactly is anti-aging. Yeah, well, anti-aging, I actually really don't like that word uh, simply because of the stigma. It's like anti, I mean, that doesn't really make sense. We're wanting to proactively age, if you will. And uh, Dave Asprey, he's a friend of mine. I've been on his show, episode 668. That's a really good one. You guys should check that out. And he actually said it very succinctly in his, you know, very typical uh, persona way of if you want to age gracefully, you're going to end up in a diaper and with a walker. So we have to make these very conscious decisions to age well, because it will not happen by accident. So I like to reframe the term anti-aging to aging proactively Mm -hmm. for many years. So what we do now, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, I'm setting myself up for pulling a Jane Fonda without the three facelifts. That's my plan. (laughs) And I think it's just great to reframe that and put more of a bit of a more positive, um, you know, uplifting spin on it, because that's what we need to do. We need to kind of like operate up, up level, raise the vibration in every aspect of our health. So it's not just like what you put on your skin. It's very much body, mind, spirit, energy practices is what I would put in that sort of bubble, if you will, of, you know, aging practices and, and aging well. Yeah. And you've done a lot of different procedures out there. Can you kind of take us through some of the more known ones you're doing as well as maybe some of the lesser known ones that you would advise practice actually do these procedures on their on clients? Mm -hmm. I've performed over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures, academically published award-winning author, international clinical trainer, consultant, all sorts of cool stuff. And it's really interesting over this 10 and a half year period, I've seen such a really cool evolution of the technologies. So when I first started, there was a lot of CRAP on the market. There still is. It's actually pretty mind boggling because I spent a couple of years basically getting my hands on some of the best quote unquote lasers out there. A lot of them are either too expensive for the benefits that they get. They're too painful or the recovery is too long. So I've really been able to identify the you know best players in respects to uh, skincare, laser rejuvenation, resurfacing, uh, photo biomodulation and uh, facial injectables and and things like that. So in terms of what's the best, well, it actually depends on what you need listening, right? It does have to be customized to what your approaches are. Just reach out, book a call with me. Casper will set you up uh, with how to do that in the show notes. But that's really where to start is like, well, what are your specific skin goals? What are you wanting to Mm -hmm. achieve? What are you wanting to focus on? Say, for example, is it brown spots? Is it broken capillaries? Is in melasma, rosacea, diffuse redness, right? Red acne scars, or is it sort of pitted acne scars, large pores, crepey, thinning skin via the mechanism of losing collagen, or low brows and hooded upper eyelids or lower eye bags, or, you know, submental neck fullness. So it really just depends on what you're wanting to target. So it's not like this. Uh, I interviewed Naveen Jane recently. He's like, everyone's looking for the silver bullet, mm-hmm. right? It, it doesn't exist. It's always layering all of these different pieces of the puzzle, very much what you like to talk about as well, Casper, alongside getting the in clinic and also the at home stuff. And I will be very honest with you that over this period of time when, you know, uh, clinics were shut down and things like that, I've fully leaned into my in clinic stuff. And I got to say, I am doing less in the clinic than I ever have just really dialing in the biohacking, dialing in my at home skincare, dermal rolling, red light therapy. I mean, there's so so much that I do cold water exposure, getting in those off grid days once a week, I swear has a huge impact on my skin from various different um, elements. So these are some of the things what you just mentioned, cold water, um, uh, you know, red light. These are some of the things that you'd be advising in a virtual consult with someone that they can do at home for anti-aging that you'd be personalizing, correct? Yeah, I actually send all of my clients home with an extremely comprehensive report of some of the different biohacking technologies that I think that they could benefit from. So I've actually been the first to tie both beauty and biohacking together. And I'm very fortunate to um, have 
one of my good friends as the father of biohacking. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of cool to be that person to bring them together. Uh, but newsflash, when you feel good, you're going to look good. So I don't really <laughs> know why somebody didn't do that before. Uh, but yeah, in a virtual call, you know, I go through what you're wanting to focus on. We dial in, you know, maybe what you're currently doing for your skin routine and ways to change things. I really feel for the the gents out there because guys never get told how to wash their face and how to actually put products on and what they can do. So then they ring me up and I work with male celebrities, tech moguls from all over the world. Rachel, how do I fix these low brows? these hooded eyelids, these age spots, things like that. And then I come up with a plan for what to do at home and in the clinic. I have no idea why nobody else didn't do this first, but I started doing uh, virtual calls with clients internationally, but over two years ago, and nobody else was doing it. The typical consult you'll get in a clinic, get this is like a free 15, 30 minute session with the consultant. It takes me at least 30 minutes just to hear Mm -hmm my clients concerns, but yeah, it's a totally done for you approach. I come up with a plan for you with you and then give you lots of biohacking homework to look at. And I also find clinics near uh, my clients as well. Cause I'm very well connected as an instructor and, you know, I'll look at the best technologies uh, that are available there too, and then provide ongoing support. So I'm like everybody's secret, secret best friend in their back pocket. <laughs> It's a wonderful best friend to have, right? That can personalize this. And of course, what you're doing in anti-aging, we've been trying, you know, doing in medicine as well. This, you know, idea of personalizing. Yeah, it's the future future. across the board, right? And there's a very, I always say there, there's a very fine line between biohacking, anti-aging and medicine. They really should be all together. There Mm -hmm. really isn't that much of a difference to it all. It's all about optimizing yourself inside and out. And that's, that's a big part of where everything's going to be going. Now, I think part of what you said, why you're the first, I feel like a lot of people, they've been pushed to believe anti-aging is either surgery, Botox, or some kind of chemical peel. And when you have those three options, you think, just like in conventional medicine, I would say most people that come to our center say, wait, there's something outside of the pharmaceutical drug or surgery that I've been told are my only two options. And it's like, well, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of different things out there. And I think what you're doing is capitalizing on that in anti-aging too, to say, hey, these are not your only three options. Now, I know you're not against Botox, but when we spoke, you said maybe it's not the first resort. Actually, that's not entirely true. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Correct me here. Tell, tell me about your thoughts on Botox. And I know just before we even start recording, you said you were p- publishing some papers on mm-hmm. the safety of different therapies. So maybe you could even touch on that as well. Yeah. So that's quite simply a brand name. So we have seen this with celebrities saying, I don't use Botox. Well, they're just getting another brand of it. I mean, they're not fooling anybody. Uh, What I care about is actually the molecular structure of the molecule, Mm -hmm. right? So there are different products on the market that have the core neurotoxin. That's what's inhibiting the message from the nerve to the muscle. That's what makes those neuromodulators work. It's actually uh, basically slicing the SNP protein so that the um, acetylcholine can't then get released into the cleft to then make the muscles uh, fire essentially. So it's kind of like just snipping that little receptor for about a three to four Per- month period. Uh, but some of the products out there have um, preservatives, they have additional complexing proteins that simply don't need to be there. Uh, so newsflash, they're European products that are ahead of the game. The Europeans have been way ahead of us compared to North America in the anti-aging space. Their wellness centers have had things like biochargers, things like, uh, you know, other things to support uh, more healthy biofield and also just create a more coherent field in the actual rejuvenation space. Uh, And yeah, in my papers, I definitely put out there that unknown long-term side effects do occur with injectables and facial rejuvenation. So I like to recommend that clinicians take a good seven to eight year you know, just wait and see for about seven, eight years, what the side effects are going to be. Cause I, I'll tell you, I've seen people that before seeing me had other, you know, permanent facial rejuvenation injectables. And then over 10 years later, then they'll have some type of inflammatory effect. And also some of the other things I'm publishing is patient selection. So really reducing 
treatments with, I mean, this isn't medical advice, always seek the guidance of your licensed physician. This is educational information only, but patient selection is key. So not getting a treatment, if you're not feeling well, maybe reconsidering if you have an underlying autoimmune condition, because based on my conversations with those that are knee deep in the health and wellness space, these are the people they're seeing higher rates of injuries with are those with underlying uh, conditions. So when I present these topics at um, aesthetic nursing, aesthetic medicine conferences, I'm always concerned if I'm going to get a little bit of flack for it, because mm. it's such a different way of looking at things. Um, because these aren't benign rejuvenation treatments, they carry risks, right? Some people are going to respond better to things than others. But I got to say the, um, the feedback I get when I present on just different ways of offering these treatments with more of an emphasis on the knowledge of, okay, this might not play out well for this client because of this, 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 it's actually being very well received and it's getting me international attention. I actually just uh, submitted an abstract and was accepted to speak. They, they reached out to me, a uh, German nursing conference and which is really cool. So people are resonating with this different approach to aging and my approach to really focusing on, on uh, skin health from the inside out. Yeah. That's super cool because, you know, I, I would imagine that some people may be resistance because it's new people are always, I know really? in medicine, you know, as soon as my father started practicing something alternative, there was skepticism in the hospital where he worked and he just kept going that direction and, you know, pushed that skepticism aside. And some doctors absolutely championed that and continued there and pioneering new ways to, to bring other things, other options into the medical fields. And I think you're seeing an acceptance as long as there is something to help with uh, basically replacing or adding on to it, right? So if you're just going to say Botox is bad, don't use it. That's one way of saying, well, that's my business. I can't continue on. But if you're saying, hey, there are other things you could add to actually get better results maybe, or even less, let's say, risky ones, and you could still get good results, I think that's a different approach than just attacking something and walking away from the podium, right? 100%. And so that that's why you know it's really interesting that you're bringing all these different elements in and still saying, yes, we could utilize Botox, but maybe we should look at some other things first before we go there and really understand the risks of everything we may use on a client or patient. Now, we've talked about this, and I know you consider yourself a health futurist, and you even mentioned a few times here that application of energy, vibrations, frequency, light therapy within the beauty realm. Can you go into some of the things, I know you even mentioned biocharger a second ago, but can you go in some of the things you're utilizing in that field and what you've seen by bringing in energy into the equation? Because I do think it's so pivotal, not just in healing, but actually in rejuvenation. What have you seen? I certainly foresee that there's actually a sci-fi movie and it's funny how things get kind of put into those type of sci-fi movies. And then, you know, sure enough, it's like the tricorders on Star Trek, right? You yes. know, let's do a little <laughs> scan. Here's some, here's some uh, feedback for you. Poof. There you go. Right. Uh, there's been some really cool research coming two two papers out of Stanford on the topic of photobiomodulation. Mm. So this is actually an epigenetic change through light energy. So let's just like geek out for a second here. So there's a laser on the market that uses broadband light that the light is attracted to a target in the skin. That's called chromophore. The target can either be melanin, like your brown spot, dark hairs, also great for hair removal in some skin types, not all. And then on another target is actually hemoglobin. So we're thinking red, right? Broken capillaries, diffuse redness, red acne scars. So the light energy is looking for those chromophores, it gets absorbed, and then it just kind of breaks it down. It gets like, it injures that, that tissue target, if you will. Then your macrophages come in, they do the job, clear things out, uh, either from the surface out or from the inside. It's pretty neat how these uh, mechanisms can play out depending on the layer in the tissue. So to bring it back to some of the epigenetic studies with broadband light, they looked at, these are two Stanford studies. You can just look this up, BBL, Stanford, you'll find it. So clients in their fifties, they compared to clients in their thirties. So, you know, when you're looking at, I believe it's, um, 
electrophoresis when they're doing the DNA studies. You know, if you've ever watched CSI, they're <laughs> pinpoint, you know, who was the murderer, right? We got their GNAs. We have, we have that information and there's these little lines, right? Some genes get turned on and off as we age. So when you're looking at a 30 year old versus a 50 year old, it's almost like the script gets flipped, right? The cell, the skin cells start to, um, basically their, their life cycle starts to slow down the older we get in the 50 year old. So what they noticed was when the, the broadband light was applied to the 50 year old skin, the cells actually started to behave more like the 30 year olds, which is so cool. Mm -hmm. So this is just very promising. Not only are we seeing light impacting, uh, creating like younger functioning cells via the mechanism of epigenetics, I definitely see that we could use light in many other applications in our bodies for promoting, you know, healing, maybe sometimes promoting just like a little bit of a controlled injury to then get the body to say, Hey, let's make some fresh collagen and elastin and turn on those fibroblasts a little bit. So I th definitely think the future is going to be with, with light energy. It's going to be through feedback. I'm, there's actually a beauty quark experiment that was done through LHC. So I'm, I'm things that happen through those types of, um, large scale studies do end up playing out in more of like a commercial, uh, consumer application. So I'm really excited for what's next, but that's pretty well in the rejuvenation space. Some of the most cutting edge information and plays between light energy and getting our cells to actually behave younger. Yeah. I am so bullish on light therapy in general across anti-aging and medicine, really pushing the boundaries, what is possible. Because really, as we look at it, even here, we have so many different light therapies here at, at our center from plasma light, full spectrum, uh, spectronic kind of infrared and UV light, all these different things that you could apply on the body in different ways. And it's really beyond the, the application of wavelengths, also information to the cells. And once you get those cells to regenerate properly, they start to build and you actually have a healing and you get lots of things that were dysfunctioning to function properly again. And think about it, it's just applying light. It seems so simple, but the right type is just right information for your body to then cause either a, a kind of youthful uh, appearance and, and reaction or regenerative reaction. So it's so cool. And I think we're just, you know, touching the tip of the iceberg really in what we can do. And like you said, I really foresee little scanners, like, you know, going track over, orders, like start, yeah, yeah star <laughs> Trek in this all the way and being able to not only provide information, but hopefully assess information too. And get, you know, because we, of course, give off light too in biophotons. We sure do. And by the way, before we geek out on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And more energy isn't always better though, as well. So when we're oh, no. seeing these red light devices and they're trying to position themselves as being better because they have a higher jewel output, doesn't always mean it's better because there's kind of like a therapeutic range for jewels and energy. And yeah, I have a reader right behind me right here. I stick my, my fingers in here. Then it extrapolates the uh, light that comes off my fingers. The bio well, yes. I'm a program that I get to see my human biofield. And that's a really cool thing that people overlook. We all totally. have this. We all are emitting light. We don't see it normally. Some of us maybe give off a glow or an aura, but um, uh, this well, is something- radiance. That is radiance in a sense. And I think that was a question you had for me, like, what is radiance? And I believe that we both agreed it is sort of this idea of your biophotons being in complete coherence and actually radiating and, and giving off this sort of glow that is energetically felt and could be assessed through things like the bio well. Tell me a little bit, uh, are you using the bio well to assess any clients? Or are you just doing on yourself at this time? How are you using that and that idea of biophotons within your programs? Well, first of all, I have to see it for myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked up a bio well, uh, was fully trained on it, which is great. And I've been doing some minor experiments on myself and everyone else in my home with mm -hmm. their informed consent, obviously, <laughs> and just checking, checking out some different, uh, you know, biohacking technologies. Do they have an impact on supporting our, our biofield uh, via the mechanism of creating more coherent, coherent field around us. 
And I really feel like energy medicine and having these types of detectors that use cure lawn photography, that's, that's how it works. There's like this cure lawn photography plate inside this little mm-hmm. box here. And I think that's the future. Cause it's really weird. I had actually my liver displaying and also my right jaw and my left eye. So the first thing I did with my liver was actually, I haven't had alcohol in about two months now and that's not displaying anymore, but I was a couple of weeks after I had that reading, I had some right jaw pain and then also some left periocular eye like headaches. And it was just fascinating that a few weeks before it picked that up. And so I was able to mitigate impact on my liver because it was displaying. And I, I feel like every clinician needs this. And again, Europeans are way ahead of us than in North America. It's not an expensive tool. It doesn't take long to do a reading and it just gives us this snapshot. And also there, there are some like feedback things. I still don't understand how it can um, assess your chakra balancing. I don't quite understand that yet. So that's going to be the next rabbit hole for me. But when we're talking about radiance and energy, this concept has actually been talked about for a couple of thousand years, uh, actually in the biblical text, Jesus was referenced as having a glow about him. And I'm sure if you were to look at other uh, spiritual texts, cause there's some really great um, information out there uh, that's, you know, just going to be in alignment for you in just the right way, just the right time. And I'm sure you'd see that in some of the other uh, spiritual leaders and gurus that they just, you know, they look after their temple. There's less crap in their body. And the whole concept of being radiant and glowing is that when you get your body functioning in a way it wants to function, it's almost going to be like egg beaters, extra stuff, extra toxins, you know, even thought forms like fear thought forms, especially right now there's no room for that in your body. Your mechanisms are going to be able to just like shove that stuff out of the way and keep your body uh, running like the fine tuned machine that it was created to be. We just have to start to get in tune with it and realize what it wants and then avoid the things that it, it doesn't want. Just, you just have to listen to your body. Yeah. Too often we just don't listen and we're trying to find information outside of our body. That's going to dictate what we should put in it. And you know, one of the things I want to get into you with is this idea of beauty from the inside out, looking at what we're putting into our body that then is reflected on the outside in our skin. And you know, I posted on it today that that we're, we sometimes look what we could add into our bodies rather than what we could remove. We have so many chemicals, so many toxins now, just in our regular supply or food supply, air, water supply, everything. And I think we're inundated. And you just said it, we need less crap in our body, right? So how important is the idea of detoxification for anyone going through any anti-aging regimen and how much priority do you give it when looking at someone who's working with a client and trying to get them the optimal results? All right. Well, let's just think of, you know, a typical client that I'll see that has diffuse redness to the cheeks, nose, maybe they've been told they have rosacea or they have periocular edema. So puffy eyes, right? Allergy season. They just, you know, have eye irritation. It's a mucous membrane. I find that the skin and the eyes are one of the first places to show inner inflammation. So depending on whether or not a client's receptive to it, I will recommend that they test and don't guess what foods may be helpful for them. And there's a lot of excellent test kits out there, either epigenetics, you know, gene type swab test kits or stool sample test kits that are more affordable than ever and easy to access. And still a lot of Western docs still don't know about like the advancements in the at-home testing, which allows us as the consumer to then have a readout on our app or report or however that looks and be able to make our food choices that way. And then you can retest and, you know, see what's, what changes you've been able to make on an epigenetic level, but that's really kind of step one. If you're noticing accelerated signs of aging or periocular edema, redness around the eyes, on the skin, melasma, those are definitely things to look into a little bit further. And that's, you know, certainly what I advise my clients to do when I meet with them kind of help them figure out, okay, maybe try this test kit and then see what information you get from that, which is 
which is so, so key. And in terms of detoxification, one of the ways I detox myself is getting my off grid days. So I'll either hop in, in my Jeep, which is like a, it's an analog Jeep. It's leaking fluids from every single gasket. (laughs) (laughs) It's almost as old as I am, but I still, I still love it. There's nothing better. Okay. I also grew up um, around vehicles, taking part motors in high school, motocross, all that stuff. My dad took me to car shows as soon as I could walk. So I've always been a bit of a a petrol head, motor head, whatever you want to call it. If you're from the UK, Uh, they make fun of us for calling gas, gasoline. They're like, it's petrol, it's petrol. So yes, I have had to do, um, you know, bush repairs on my vehicle for Mm -hmm. for the the radiator and all that cool stuff. But so that's one of the ways I detox is I'll just completely get myself out of cell reception for a good three hours, like out of cell reception. So I'm three hours in the bush, three hours back, get in uh, cold flowing water out there as well. Um, So those are, I've found that that is a really great way for me to detox. And I see it in my skin, just the clarity. And then I can come back and it's almost just like, I've had that day of regeneration because I feel like my body, mind, spirit, and energy aren't working so hard to get rid of all of the other physiological impacts like gluing of our red blood cells when we're exposed to things like EMFs and just sometimes even getting away from people <laughs> and their, their thought forms too, right? It can of be course. Good. And, and, you know, that's a, a part I want to get into in a little bit is your, your idea of taking off the grid, getting off the grid and something that's really important to you. But let's talk a little bit about EMF because you brought that up. And, and that idea of it is a toxin. And I completely have always said that electromagnetic fields are toxins to you. And even I know um, Dr. Mindy Beck, who made you Matrix, who you've connected with as well. She, she actually refers to them as bully toxins because they're like they bully your, the information, your body. So your cells don't know what to do. It is an artificial, you know, a uh, wavelength ba- basically going through you. And then it kind of causes the static in your body to even know, all right, we're supposed to regenerate normally, but now it's static. Now I don't have the right information. So it, you know, it definitely is a toxin and we have talked about you matrix, Soma Vedic, but what are some of your tips besides getting off the grid for minimizing EMF as a toxin in your body that can lead to premature aging? Yeah, certainly. So when we look at some of the electron microscope testings on the red blood cells, when someone's been exposed to EMFs versus when they've had their feet on the ground, grandology.co.uk has some great slides up there to highlight that. Um, I really think that there is there, there should be more data out there. And actually one of my girlfriends, she's a professionally trained microbiologist. We're going to be doing our own, uh, live red blood cell electron microscope analysis with some of the uh, devices, like what's behind me just to test that and just add to the body of knowledge. Cause I really think that this is just what you said, static on the airways Mm. for me, it's actually sound that can really pull me out of like that flow state. Say I hear something like a car go by or whatever it's that is static on my airways. So it's going to be different for everybody. Now, electromagnetics is something that I um, have actually been told that is one of my strong suits. And if you're unsure of really how electromagnetics and EMFs are impacting us, just remember that literally every cell Every protein, every hormone in your body is mediated through either protons, positively charged ions, or electrons, negatively charged ions. And when there's an imbalance, we're not grounded, we're too positive, that gradient is interfered with. So then we're thinking mitochondria and ATP and the electron transport change. Super happy I took biochem (laughs) so that I understand this stuff. So if you're like, okay, why does EMF actually, like, what does it actually do? It's disrupting our natural ion gradients and balancing. That's why grounding is so key right now to help to mitigate uh, those implications. So one of the other things I would like to mention about devices and EMFs is say I'm performing a treatment for somebody and they uh, basically, they have their smartwatch on and I'm in the middle of like doing something nice for them. And then they're like, oh, (laughs) right. It's like, they get like put into that high beta state. So not only is it the invisible uh, distortion 
of our human biofield and electromagnetics, but it's also the brainwave implication of always pulling you back in. So I don't have kids. I uh, have my phone on airplane mode. I'll check it when I want to check it. But all my friends and family, they know that. Uh, so those, yeah, I, those, it's like the static on the airways. I was, de- I would definitely agree with that, that it is a layer of toxicity. Yeah. And you mentioned some, uh, because a lot of people think, okay, devices, Soma Vedic, I see in the background there is a great one. You matrix is a great one, but nature is a great one, right? Like you mentioned grounding right there, simple, easy, get outside ocean for negative ions, right? The rolling ocean and seawater is absolutely a source of negative ions. Like you said, when you're too positive, too charged, that's not a good thing. You need that balance. So being, and those are things I see you apply all the time. That is your getaway and that's how you do it. And so do you advise everyone to do that? And regardless of where you are and what state you are is to get out there, ground yourself, how many minutes, like if people are listening to this and be like, okay, I got to get outside, put my feet in the dirt or something, and then I'll be healthier, which is true. It is. And science backs that. But how would you recommend a client uh, to mitigate these EMF and and the harmful effects of it? Sure. Well, I'll tell you how I started my cold water therapy journey. And it was through my dear husband. He's a pro athlete. His name's Gabriel Varga, six-time pro world champion kickboxer. He's like the epitome of a martial artist who listens to his body. So when I talk to him about biohacking, he's like, I don't need that stuff. (laughs) But he is one of those rare people that is very in tune with his body. And, you know, I definitely think he's like a new soul. He doesn't have any programs running in the background that's interfering with his ability to uh, really listen in on that. But, you know, people like myself, maybe we need to take a slightly different approach. Uh, But yeah, I kick his butt in cold water therapy, actually. So I'll get up to my jawline for about eight minutes in the ocean. I find that the uh, fresh mountain water runoff, it's actually snowfall water runoff is way colder. Mm -hmm. And I find that very difficult, but up to seven minutes, uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets, but it never really gets easy, especially when it is uh, colder. Like for example, like the mountain run water runoff, Uh, having, getting under a waterfall feels like having icicles drilled into your head and shoulders. So that's actually really difficult. So if you're like, oh, there's a waterfall, I'll get (laughs) under that might actually be really hard. So you could just start with like a galvanized tub in your yard. That's what we have. I also have a little pond that I got in when it was actually frozen. That was interesting. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Usually your feet will kind of um, start to like burn when you first get in like your hands. So maybe just keep your hands out of the water until you're able to get in there, have like a friend go with you, uh, put a timer on. That's what I'll do. I like to do it at sunset. So then I get that sun gazing and it kind of just distracts me. And then I'll look at nature around me, swim around a little bit. Uh, But yeah, it works really well for me, not only from a rejuvenation perspective, there's many benefits to cold water therapy. I certainly find my skin is better when I do it, but I actually do it for pain Mm -hmm. and nervous system regulation more than anything. But I think it's also really worthwhile to talk about the importance of bolstering our unseen health, which is the human biofield. And I think that this is really important um, for just like our innate protection. So I'm happy to um, talk about that. It's a little bit more like woo esoteric, but trust me, this stuff all is part of the world of beauty and like a higher level of radiance that I certainly see my clients practicing body, my spirit, energy practices, especially those clients of mine in their sixties to eighties that have these practices dialed in. They're just like, they got next level radiance, even though they have fine lines, wrinkles, they're showing up more beautiful and radiant than my clients in their twenties and thirties. Let's talk about that. Cause these are the secret tips from an expert that, that you got to know everything else here. I feel like, of course, these are amazing pieces, but when you go into a little bit of that esoteric, that's like the, the secret jam right there that people sometimes miss and that'll take you to the next level. So talk a little bit about that of, of getting back those biofields of kind of raising those vibrations at certain age, especially that a lot of people will just lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like with any um, clinician, you start to notice anecdotally some of your clients that are simply doing better than others. Mm -hmm. And I certainly noticed um, 
that definitely the clients in there are like 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, like, you know, for the most part, postmenopausal, they were doing things like grounding, art, music, yoga, Qigong, very grounding practices, by the way, yoga and Qigong, very good. Um, and just like eating in ways that are right for them during this whole craziness. Those are actually the, the ones that were holding it down for their kids because they had those very uh, well-established lifestyle practices, body, mind, spirit, energy, and they were really able to support their kids that had young kids. And it was just really neat to see that. So I actually wrote a whole book on my observations called unlocking your vitality that you can get at the website, rachelvarga.ca. Um, in consultation, I really focus on skincare, skin and rejuvenation treatments, some of the biohacking stuff. And then in, uh, in conversations like here on the podcast, I do like to get into a little bit more of the extra things that you can add that are often free, but do take the most effort. So when you're thinking of ways to support your human biofield, I will reference a leader in the space of science meets medicine. And that's the work of Dr. Terrence Palmer. And he actually has some excellent resources on his website that gives you tips for bolstering your, you know, your human biofield and your invisible layer of protection, especially now, like if, if you're considering yourself like a high vibe spiritual type person, we are, and you know, we emit a lot of energy jewels wise, we are actually more susceptible to unseen things, especially at this time. So if this is the first time you're hearing about it, this is great. Uh, getting into, if you can't get into the ocean, fill up your bathtub before bed. I like to have my red light therapy going. I'll put in some nice, like frankincense essential oils, throw in some salt in the tub as well, so that you're getting that um, ion and mineral cleansing prayer is really important. So leaning into whatever type of spiritual practice that were, that is for you. My great grandmother was a second ordained uh, evangelical minister in Canada, female evangelical minister. And then my great, great grandma was one of the first UK spiritualists to come over here on the boat uh, from the UK to Canada. So that's in my lineage. So that's why I feel like I, I kind of am always learning and wanting to learn about that, but it's just simply what I see in my clients, the ones that are doing the best, the ones that have just like this higher level of energy and radiance and beauty and just resilience and sovereignty over their bodies. They're doing um, energetic protecting and energy balancing practices. Awesome tips. And again, something that you probably won't hear most dermatologists conventionally trained going into, right? <laughs> and yet it is essential. I, I have to kind of second that from the healing medical aspect of what we see is when you have that purpose, that higher consciousness, that connection to nature, universe, all of that, you're going to see better outcomes. It's not to say that's everything. You know, if you have some very chronic cases, you're going to need, you know, medical treatments. They should be personalized, comprehensive, holistic, looking at the root cause. But that that purpose, that that positivity, that those things you get from nature as well. I'm sorry, if you go out and just walk in nature, if you don't feel good, that's I don't know what to tell you. It's like it it, it almost goes hand in hand. Um, but these are things that we often forget or dismiss as simplistic, esoteric, these kind of, you know, although, you know, science is, is catching up and proving how these things work. And one thing I wanted to get into, because we talked about the ocean, we talked about grounding. And one thing that in anti-aging dermatology beauty is, is sometimes seen as a negative is sun exposure. And the idea of, of course, limiting that utilizing a lot of different SPFs and sunscreens on your, I know that many of them have, you know, chemicals, carcinogens, endocrine disruptors in them. What are your thoughts on sun exposure and, and uh, you know, just the, the benefits versus the harms of UV rays in the sun? Let's just talk about the different wavelengths of light to start. Mm. So right now I got my studio lighting on, you know, LED lights, terrible, right? <laughs> Computer screens, cell phones, blue light, 
And the worst thing is a lot of us have, I do not, um, LED lights above us in the mm -hmm. home. So what we know about blue light is, you know, you've had many experts talking about blue light impacting our circadian rhythms, our sleep, hormones, all of that. But I'm probably the first person that you free to have on your show to talk about the negative impacts of blue light on the skin. Mm. So what we know is that the blue light actually is getting absorbed into the skin deeper than what we get outside UVA, UVB. So there's a, it's that cumulative impact of light on the skin that creates photo aging and skin cancers and, and things like that. You, outside we're getting UVA, which are like the aging rays, cloudy, rainy days, right? If you don't need a flashlight to illuminate your path or your car headlights on, then you're getting UVA rays. That's what creates most of our aging. But really now I think it's going to be our blue light exposure. And then we have UVB rays. Those are the burning rays. Those are the rays that we get when we're in the sunshine. And what I like to do is I love the sun. I mean, mm. this is like the most primal, unadulterated light that we can expose our bodies to. I love getting light in my eyes first thing in the morning. I've had Dr. Lisa coach. She's a triple board certified physician talking about the pathways on my show, Rachel Varga podcast, which you guys check out. And then I love getting it in, in the evening uh, sunset when I get my cold therapy in, but I do wear sunscreen every day, but there's really two kinds of sunscreen. One is CRAP. One is good. Um, <laughs> the one that is CRAP is a chemical sunscreen filter. Mm -hmm. So these are often found in your over-the-counter products that your traditional dermatologist is recommending that you get, which I do have a big problem with a lot of the products that general derms are recommending. And I've actually reached out to a local derm and said, why are you recommending this product that has all three parabens in it, mm -hmm. which is a known hormone disruptor, the clinical data, the verdict is out on that one. It's because they're well tolerated and affordable, but <laughs> that needs to change. Cause there is a 2020 article. You can search this on PubMed, a topic dermatitis that looked at some of the key over the counter brands that are recommended by a lot of derms on YouTube and things like that. They got their Amazon affiliate links. Don't be fooled. Um, but there are known nine to 14 allergens that can contribute to atopic dermatitis. So that conversation needs to change mm -hmm. in the medical dermatology world. I don't care if I get flack for that. I'm just going to point you to the research articles. There you go. So chemical sunscreens are still being recommended. Unfortunately, uh, the chemical filters like avobenzone, oxybenzone, they get absorbed in the skin. That's why they take a little while to work. You have to reapply them after one to three hours. They don't last very long. Who's really going to reapply their sunscreen every one to three hours? Let's be honest. They sting your eyes, they kill our coral reefs, they mess mm -hmm. with your hormones. Those are the sunscreens mixed with like your primer, BB cream, CC cream, moisturizer, foundation, stuff like that. Do not use them. Do not use spray sunscreens. You don't want to inhale and get those in your mucous membranes either and impact the person six feet away from you. Yeah. That's trying to get their <laughs> nice time outside too. So the alternative is mineral sunscreen. So this is using a combination of zinc and titanium dioxide. There's some incredible formulations that I work with. I work with medical grade brands, over 13 of them that I work with, and I'll pick and choose based on what my clients needs to address their goals based on what I've seen, uh, you know, thousands of my other clients get a great response to as well. So mineral sunscreen is creating like this mineral um, application, right? So it's creating a little bit more of like a block or barrier, but that's still not the right word to use. It's creating a screen. And mineral sunscreens are going to last more like six, seven hours. Great to use around the eyelids all the way to the lash line to protect the delicate eye area from aging. I love lip sunscreens with mineral sunscreens. I can make a recommendation for that as well. Just reach out. But I do wear sunscreen every freaking day mm. from my face, my eyelids, my neck, side of the neck, top of the chest, and my hands. When I go outside, I am very cognizant of how much I expose. So a lot of times I'll wear like UV protectant clothing. I won't expose my arms more often than I need to, but you know, I'm getting in that full body exposure as often as I can, even if it's kind of cold, but if you do cold water and then you're in the sun after, and you're still in Canada, the sun actually starts to warm you up. But mineral sunscreen is, is key to use every day. 
The verdict is out on that, that it prevents skin cancer and skin is our largest organ, which is why I have so much fun with it because it is the largest organ of detoxes. We need to protect it. So mineral sunscreen every day, hundred percent gets the win for me to prevent loss of collagen and elastin, hooded eyelids, brown spots, red acne scars, saggingness, sagging skin to the jawline, neck, all that stuff. It's really about removing as many chemicals from the introduction of them into your body and using nature, right? Because something mm. like a mineral based is a natural type of way. So again, nature provides the solutions to these problems. And I think but it, nature it, always su also supplies petroleum. So when you see marketing of products and they say, oh, it's all natural mm. or chemical free, those are, you know, terrible terms because water and air are chemicals, but it depends if those chemicals are good for us. Like glycolic acid chemical peels. Those are also awesome, but people's minds can kind of say, Oh, those are chemicals. Those are bad. Not necessarily. But one of the other things I wanted to mention about sun exposure is I do actually take certain supplements that give me the opportunity because my skin type, I'm a Fitzpatrick skin type two, one of the highest risk for skin cancers, accelerated aging, things like that is that I do take supplements that give me antioxidant and sun protection from the inside out so that I can safely enjoy my time outside in nature. And, um, I don't have to reapply as often as I don't, and I don't burn as easily. Yeah. I, I think there's been this kind of war against the sun for a while from the sunscreen, you know, uh, industry and listen, the use of chemicals to combat is probably the worst thing you could do. My father always talks about this, that those, you know, they, they slog down your whole lymphatic system. They're causing reactions in the skin anyway. As soon as you introduce those chemicals into the blood, that's when skin cancer went through the roof. So we have to kind of look at this and take a step back on that macrocosmic and not vilify the sun which is, you know, the reason we're alive in a sense, we require the sun and sunlight. Um, and so does everything on earth basically. So, you know, I, I think it's really important what you said to educate yourself, understand what is natural and what is good and not just go by the marketing terms out there. Cause there are a lot, right. Um, and, and that's very difficult, but because of people like you that are educating and empowering, it makes it a little bit easier. One of the yeah. other things I wanted yeah. to just quickly mention when we're talking about like sun exposure, just so you know, there are certain rejuvenation treatments mm -hmm. that are better to have done in the fall and winter to mitigate the sun exposure you had from your amazing days in nature. So there are ways to still get outside and enjoy the sun. And then you can do some work in the fall, winter to kind of like clean up the skin a little bit and uh, just keep on top of your collagen and elastin levels too. And a big part of that, I think, again, is going back to detoxification. Because when you have toxicity, a lot of times, if it's burdening the organs of elimination, where's it going to come out of? What is your other kind of backup organ of elimination? Your skin. That's where it can. So your body's saying, all right, I can't get it out through the liver, kidneys, through urine, through just going to the bathroom. This is a bad substance in us. We got to get it out somehow. And then you go and you start, and once you sit in the sun and you're using these chemicals also, and maybe you get it going a little bit and activate it more, suddenly rashes, redness, burn, all these other things happen. And you might wonder why I'm wearing the sunscreen, this and that. And a lot of times you got to look at what's going on inside again, that's then going to be showing outside. So it, it brings us back to this idea of detoxification and removing toxins being so essential to not just skin health and beauty, but, but overall health. Now, one of the, the topics I wanted to talk to you about, because it's a cross section between, I think, aesthetics and health are hair treatments and this idea of, you know, strong, thick hair. And I, I was just curious, uh, you know, what do you advise? Are there products? Do you like products like Nutrafol and other ones that are out there now that use more natural ways? Or do you recommend things again, like minoxidil and others for, for of course, men in that case, probably not so much for women, but wh where do you fall on this line of how do you make healthier, stronger, thicker hair? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually get asked this quite a bit by my both male and female clients, right? Uh, men and women lose hair differently. So for, for men and women, the baldness patterns are different. So for women, we lose our edges and then we lose hair here. And for men, it's, it's a different type of pattern. So there are, uh, 
some really great at-home options that you can do, including at-home microneedling. Now, I'm not advising you go on Amazon or eBay and buy that $20 roller that's probably coming from the Orient that's full <laughs> of heavy metals that up close under the microscope, that needle might actually be a blade. So I'm fortunate enough that the godfather of dermal rolling actually lives in the city where I live. And I'm pretty chummy with his research assistant that did their uh, collagen induction therapy studies in the 90s. So just reach out. I'll walk you through how to integrate dermal rolling into your routine because there is a method to the madness. You got to stabilize the skin first and integrate actives and integrate rolling mm -hmm. and just find that um, helps to uh, create a better level of like tolerability. So that being said, I believe I might have one. Oh, lucky me. Mm. They're right here. I just uh, did a consult right before this. So I have my stuff here. So there are things like dermal rollers that you can actually roll the hairline. And that being said, I find that sometimes like a stamper, like a small one, uh, you know, these are from South Africa. This company's again, been making rollers since the nineties. That stuff matters. You pay for what you get. You can get rollers that can last up to two years versus that five to 10 use, which is just a terrible uh, creating terrible waste for the environment as well. Yeah. But you can actually, um, with a specific uh, product I can get organized for you, go into your hairline. And then I actually work with a few serums that are locally made that are free of emulsifiers, preservatives, stored in glass bottles that were actually used in some of the initial studies with collagen induction therapy that also showed promising results with hairline stimulation as well. So you can actually use some of these stampers to get into the other areas of the hair as well. Uh, you can use things like minoxidil afterwards. There are some cardiac implications for that. Mm -hmm. It is medicine. So you do just want to check in with your doctor, but there is a great in-clinic option that you can do as well. So there was like a facial treatment that added on a hair application and I'm seeing some promising changes with that. And I'm not going to say exactly what that treatment name is. I have to be very careful about that because it might not be right for you. So just ask me and I'll, I'll go over that with you. But yeah, I think that there's definitely some promising products coming on the market. I do like to follow a good seven, eight year rule just for safety and efficacy. I've never been one of those cowboy treatments and that's what served me and my clients very well over this 10 and a half year period, 20,000 rejuvenation procedures later, you don't always want to go with like that bright, shiny object syndrome because of long-term unknown safety issues. And also you want it to be efficacious. So I can definitely uh, walk through, but yes, there's some great at home uh, in clinic options, hair transplantation uh, also is great too. It can make some recommendations for that as well. I have seen some of my clients, uh, some of my colleagues rather get great results with PRP for hair stimulation as just well. Just about to ask you. Yeah. But it's technician dependent. Of course. So you do have to like be aware of that uh, before spending thousands of dollars on things that certain things are going to be done better than others in the right hounds. Yeah, it really is. Again, uh, I think you need the help of an expert such as yourself because we have an anti-aging division here and there are so many options. You can do the, the you know, micro uh, needling with different, you know, um, uh, formulas and solutions. You, we have the PRP. There's ways to even personalize, do mega dose PRP and concentrate it and you no, know, but that's not right for everyone. So you can't just, I, I don't want to do like, I appreciate that you're saying, I'm not just going to put it out there because anyone could Google that and say, I want that and go to the cheapest route. And there, there's something about in health and Google's beauty, probably going to show you those. Yeah, I know. It, oh, they definitely <laughs> will too. because they have the biggest profit margin and put the most in advertising, not in research yeah. and you know, safety standards. So, <laughs> but you know, how do you feel about that when patient or, you know, clients come to you and kind of try and always look for the cheaper solutions? I mean, it happens in medicine all the time. Unfortunately, you come to a clinic like ours, it's not cheap. I, I wouldn't ever say that, but the value is there. It's just like anything else. You pay a lot for a car. You know, the value is usually there. You pay a lot for nice TVs and I paid a grand for my Jeep. <laughs> Well, that's it different. Depends. And by the way, my first car was a 1994 Jeep Wrangler and I love it. My brother still has it to this day and it still runs. So, um, but how do you kind of tackle that? Because in my book, you know, uh, basically you pay for what you get. And if there's one area that you really want to care about the results, it's your health. 
anti everything. This is you. It's not like, oh, I didn't get the best tires and, you know, they just didn't look. All right, that's great. It's not your health at the end of the day and it doesn't lead you to disease or looking a certain way. So, so, you know, do you kind of walk a line there with your clients and give them the the options in different price ranges, knowing that maybe some people can't afford the best, the PRP solutions, even if that may be the best for them? Yeah, uh, this is definitely something I'm very well versed in. So I love yeah. coming up with plans and protocols for at home and in clinic stuff based on my client's budget and lifestyle, right? So really leaning into your at-home routine with at-home dermal rolling is a really great way if you're on a budget. So some of my clients that are retired, they're, you know, on a pension, uh, they can't really afford the in-clinic stuff. So they lean into healthy living and their at-home stuff. And I gotta say, uh, my, some of my clients in their sixties and seventies that have been very diligent with their at-home collagen induction therapies, they come and see me and I'll do something for them. And they have more collagen and thickness to their skin than clients I'm seeing in their thirties. But this is like a long game strategy. I honestly, Casper don't really attract the people that are looking for the best deal. I tend to attract a highly discerning type of client that's willing to pay me for my insight and my advice as to how to stay on the straight and narrow, what to avoid, what to focus on, how to keep it streamlined so that you stop wasting money on things that are going to be harmful for your body or just drain your pocketbook. And also what kind of company is that supporting too? Yeah. So I don't recommend trying to like buy your skincare supplements on these third-party auction websites. Just to PSA, there are a lot of counterfeit products out there just because that Louis Vuitton handbag looks the <laughs> same online. It is probably counterfeit for that price point. So just some things to be aware of, but yeah, if you say you can't afford to do the in clinic stuff, fully lean into the at home care and you're really going to be able to still stabilize your skin and improve your uh, texture, your hydration, decrease things like photo damage and photo aging, uh, help to reduce uh, sensitive skin just via the mechanism of looking after your skin and the way it wants to look after and stabilize it. So there's lots that we can do at home and lots that we can do while on a budget, which honestly will probably be less money than trying to like have at it at the department store or ask the person working behind the counter what their recommendations are. Uh, that's kind of where I come in. So I honestly love saving my clients lots of money. Well, that's the thing. At the end of the day, I've always said you can continue the route of kind of trying to save money, but you've been in a, you know, in our case, a disease condition for numerous years. And think about all the things you've lost over those years and how much money probably was lost as well in a sense of you not being productive or so many other ways you could look at it, not even the monetary one, but those intangibles of not having relationship, not being able to go out as much, not being able to do things and not be able to you know, fulfill your dreams maybe of, of doing certain uh, things that, that you really wanted to do. And and you know, then you got to look at is what is that worth to you? Where's the value of that, right? I think it all comes down to value and health. It doesn't mean you have to pay a lot and in many cases, you'll get the advice that is free. And one of those things that I know you do, we mentioned, is going off the grid. And I think it's more necessary now than ever, right? Because those that are on the grid, so to say, are attached to their phones, are in a constant state of fear and you know, getting that sympathetic nervous system really activated with each little notification. And, and it's they're either addicted to it. And completely addicted. And if you don't believe that, you know, go see a child with a phone and take it away from while they're playing. They will go, you know, crazy. <laughs> and I know that from my niece and nephew. And and yeah, that that's not something you should do. But of course, we limit that as much as possible. It's survival um, for me. I'll just like be totally honest with you. It's survival. Yeah, go into that, you know, go into what that day even looks like, because you do it once a week, you're off the grid, you don't mm -hmm. touch it. And you're someone that's quite active in a sense on social media and other things. So I find it very commendable that you can do that because most people aren't even able to go an hour without their phone on or get nervous and start to panic. So tell us about why that means so much to you going off the grid and how you do it. All right. Well, usually on my days where I will do off grid, I'll either do like sometimes on like the weekend or a weekday, depending on what my schedule looks like. I'll maybe have a couple calls that morning 
and then I'll go pick out my girlfriend. Uh, my husband doesn't like to do the off grid stuff with me. So that's more like a girlfriend kind of thing. Okay. And I got my kit. I got all my safety gear. I got my bear spray and like a sealed PVC pipe because it can't explode. Um, I have all my safety gear. So extra tools, extra fluids, fuses, toe strap, all sorts of things. Because when you're out there, if you get stuck, you got to get yourself out of there yep. or you can help other people as well, which is great. So then I'll, you know, drive, I'll have my food with me. I'll usually go to the grocery store and like make my own stuff instead of getting like takeout on the way. Um, so like high protein, I'll take a ton of water with me. Mm -hmm. I will actually drink water that I find out there and, you know, I've survived so far <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's okay. But it's just, you know, phones on airplane mode, because apparently on airplane mode is better than actually off. Your phone is still sending signals off. I don't have any Bluetooth in my ride. It's a completely analog or sorry, it, yeah, it's an analog vehicle. Mm -hmm. So there's no sending, receiving, heated seats, stuff like that. Nothing like that. Uh, so that's really important. Like when you're wanting to do it right, you do want to do it in an analog vehicle if you can. I'll make sure the person who's with me has their phone on airplane mode as well, because uh, that's important. And then you're just kind of taking in the drive. You're just looking at the scenery, the sunshine. Oh, is that a spot I want to check out? Sweet. Let's go check out that road. And, you, you know, you put your four, four low or four high on, and then you can get up, uh, do some rock crawling, which is pretty cool and get to the spots where not a lot of other people are. Mm. And there's just something to like, for me, I mentioned sound. That's like the static on my, my airways. That's why I do that is it just allows my nervous system to just take a holiday. Mm -hmm. So we're out of that sympathetic state. We're getting more into that parasympathetic state out of that high beta, more into Delta theta gamma. Right. But you're always kind of on beta alert because bears, cougars, things like that. It definitely happens. Uh, but it's, it's neat just to take that time for yourself. Like you deserve it. And if you want to do it with your partner, with your family, awesome. Just make sure you're doing it safely um, and with the right preparatory things so that you're not putting yourself or others at risk. And then I, I sleep so yeah. good and I track it with my aura ring. When I get my off grid days, it's like, you know, I get crowns on my sleep and readiness score the next day. I was going to say, you know, I don't do the one time a week like you, I do it, you know, periodically when I feel I need it. Um, but what I try and do is always do one to two trips. Well, at least before the pandemic where it's off the grid trips, Right. I did a nine day trek in Jordan from Dana to Petra. And it's like, there's no service there. You're hiking in a hundred degree weather in the middle of nowhere, just Bedouins around. And, and it is amazing. You sleep so well. I mean, you're tired, but under, you know, the stars and just beautiful scenery and you take it in and you don't care about your phone. And that's what people don't realize the body and you adapt very quickly. You think you'll be, Oh, what about, you know, what if it's an emergency? No. No, you don't, you know, you lived before we all live for thousands of years without cell phones very well. And what you realize when you do these off the grids is that you feel more connected and you just feel, I think overall, just happier, healthier, even sleep better, zend out. I mean, there is something to be said. I, I wish more people would do at least a day like you do and just see what it's like. Because you, I think you'll see, it, even though there'll be resistance of, oh, what if this, I have to call and I, you know, I, no, just make it one day. You've seen it. It's not going to suddenly be like, wow, it's throws off my whole week. It makes it better. It makes and, it an adventure as well. Like, you know, rolling up. Oh my gosh, there's a black bear. Exactly. Three, three feet away and you get, make eye the contact. experience so cool. is too. Yeah. And if you're around other people, I did this trek. We're friends to this day because you really bond. You're not checking totally. your phone and be like, oh, did you see? No, you're telling stories to each other like we did for thousands of years. And so I, I really do think that is almost what is most important to health is getting back to that, getting in touch with yourself, getting in touch with nature, cutting off these kind of things that, again, are throwing us off, getting us into stressful situations, you know, and, and really we think we're connected, but I think we're disconnected because of it. 
Totally. When you mentioned uh, like hanging out with the nomads, my sister and her fiance, he's Jordanian and they did that as well. And one of my clients got me the book, The Nomadic Mindset. Mm. So this is a mindset that leaders should really start to employ. It's not like, you know, get in the board meeting. All right, this is the agenda for today. It's like, no, let's just like have some tea first and you know what's going on. How's it going? What are some of the problems that you're experiencing? Let's brainstorm and figure out some really cool ways to address those problems. It's a totally different leadership Mm -hmm. type of mindset. And how cool is that? You know, with like the Bedouins taking people in, it's like their culture. They kind of have to, I think that's so cool that you have that experience. Super cool. And and such a a nice people. So giving that we sing every night around a fire and everything to get. And it was just like, wow, this feels nice. This is very, and these people I've never seen before, probably never see again, yet you felt that connection to them. You felt that, that kind of energy transfer. That was a very positive one. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't that you didn't know them. You felt something. No, it was, it was really great. So I think any way you could do it, whether it's even sitting at home or in your backyard, I think you have to get outside But I love your escape once a week. If you can't do that, maybe even once or twice a year, go somewhere big and do many days, as many as you can off the grid. But that's that's a really cool thing. And I'm glad you got to share that. And I hope people take that into account. So, Rachel, what's what's on your radar right now? What's coming up next for you? What are you excited about? What am I excited about? Ooh. Well, number one, how all this shenanigan is going to play out. (laughs) Um, What I'm excited about, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with the consciousness of humanity. Because we're Mm. kind of like a a, a 3D type planet. 2D, it's like a little bit lower vibe. 4D, higher vibe, right? So I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with the Earth and with humans and what type of choices we're going to be making. Because it's all it's we're at a choice point right now. I just did some deep work on this yesterday. So it's really fresh in my mind. And I think that this could just help people tuning in. It's really, uh, for me, what's on the radar next is actually honestly just cultivating my support networks, whether the seen or unseen, right? Who do you pray to? What are your spiritual practices? Who are those people in and around your area that you can call on say when you need some support, Hey, I'm feeling a little rough today. Mm. Can you pray for me? And having those people there for you um, and just like really kind of uh, rejecting that those fear thought forms, mm-hmm. especially right now, because different things have a lot of power to them, such as, you know, climate change, what's happening yep. in the world right now. Uh, another thing that's going to be a huge choice point with a lot of uh, force behind it is genetic mutation of humans. Mm. And then beyond that is going to be the interface of machine and human right? Neuralink, for for example, with Elon Musk, that's going to be another choice point. So just kind of like looking at that and seeing what humans are deciding to do. And just, I really want to encourage each and every one of you, if you're kind of getting sucked into one of those choice points and really feeling that anxiety type of thought form, just maybe reframe how you're looking at it, that that thing you're focusing on has a specific thought form. Maybe take a break from mainstream and, you know, bust out your guitar. I, you know, I have a Gibson Les Paul, another electric acoustic. I'll just make my own tunes. Or you mentioned singing and really um, singing, like doing like a chakra balancing type song can be really cool as well. And just, I find we're not like we're not really doing enough of that yep. singing and playing music. We're just throwing on YouTube and putting some music on that way. So like creating, I know you and I, Casper, we get a lot out of doing these types of conversations. It's deeply fulfilling for ourselves and our spirit and helps others. And so I'm sure that someone listening will resonate with that and will be encouraged, you know, get into cold therapy, maybe make some music, maybe make some art, do something that uh, brings them joy and just acknowledge that there's choice points right now and everybody has a choice and everybody um, is hopefully making a choice that's in accordance with their body, mind, spirit, energy, maintaining their sovereignty and all of that. But you got people tuning in here, Casper, that 
you already have them on the straight and narrow. I'm not worried about your listeners. <laughs> well, no, I, I think it's beautiful what you said, because we all do have choice. I know a lot of people feel powerless right now. They feel mm. hopeless. They're full of fear. But at the end of the day, you do have a choice. And you have a choice to go look at things through different perspective, different prisms, more macroscopically, and then you know assess, but always understand you have a choice to do things that bring you joy. If you choose to sit on in front of the TV and be in a fearful state and just stay there, that is your choice. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to end up too well for you if you stay in that state for too long. But you have that always choice to go towards joy, to uplift yourself. And I do think we are in a spot, evolutionary even, where we're seeing this choice being you know, played out on a, a very grand scale in a sense. And, and you know, more and more people will have to make a choice in a sense. But I believe that those choices, whatever they may be, will lead to some evolutionary raising in vibrations. And I do think we're at this stage where you're seeing a lot of conflict because there is change in the world. And I think that's playing out on even this energetic higher level of things going on right now. And of course, there's friction when there's change. But I think when you get through it, you'll see that, you know, that, that we will be raising. And there's a lot of people opening eyes right now. And I think there's a lot of people such as yourself out there, they're helping to open eyes, helping to empower, to make that choice and hopefully the right choice where you're uplifting yourself, raising those vibrations and, you know, increasing your consciousness. So, you know, I want to thank you for your work and everything you're doing because that that's really important at this time right now. Yeah. If you want great skin, it's all this other sweet stuff you got to start paying attention to. It's, it's incredible. All play, it's all going to play out. It is. It all plays out and it's all interconnected. And that's why skin, health, all these topics are all interconnected. And they're all really uh, something that people should look at in that way and not just separate and try and say, oh, what's wrong with the skin? Look at the body, look at the spirit, look at the mind and look at all these things. And they will reflect on all levels of your being. So Rachel, where can people learn more about you and just, uh, you know, connect with you? Yeah. Hang out with me on the Rachel Varga podcast where Casper has been on the show as well. It's all about body, mind, spirit, energy optimization to bring forth a higher level of beauty and radiance. And then you can book a one-on-one with me at rachelvarga.ca and just use Casper's first and last name. It'll be in the show notes for 15% off of your session with me. And I'll help you optimize what you're doing at home and in the clinic. I'd love to hang out with you. I love the clients that I'm connecting with and, you know, we're here to support one another. Um, I'll support you well after that consultation with me as well, help you find some rock star clinicians and great laser technologies where you are also, no matter where you are in the world, because I do this stuff internationally. And uh, yeah, I have a great uh, freebie. That's my sophisticated skin cheat sheet and treatment planning guide that you can get when you register for my newsletter, rachelvarga.ca. That's just a really great succinct way to just give you some insight into cleansing, moisturizing, sun protection, exfoliation, some key details that, you know, you can start doing now for free to kind of optimize maybe what you're already doing. And then, yeah, just come hang out with me at rachelvarga.ca. I would love to meet you. Awesome. We'll put up all these links for the listeners on the website. And Rachel, always a pleasure connecting with you. I love geeking out with you. You too. Can't wait for the next one. (laughs) Yes. Hopefully soon.